Hello everybody. Today let us discuss the bubble sort algorithm and also how to analyze the efficiency of non-recursive algorithm that consists of nested loops by taking bubble sort as an example. Bubble sort is used to arrange the elements of a given list in ascending or descending order. It is based on the algorithm design technique brute force. Brute force is the straightforward approach that we can apply to solve the problem based on the definition of the problems. So first let us understand how bubble sort algorithm works. In bubble sort algorithm two consecutive or adjacent elements present at position j and j plus 1 are compared and they are swapped if they are out of order. If they are in order they are left as it is. What do we mean by out of order? If we want to arrange the elements in ascending order then if the element present at position j plus 1 is smaller than the element present at position j then we are going to exchange because in ascending order the smaller element has to appear before larger element. If the larger element happens to be present in position j plus 1 and a smaller element uh, appears to present in position j then we are going to leave it as it is because they are in order. So this we do by starting with the first two elements comparing and swapping if necessary second and third comparing and swapping if necessary third and fourth fourth and fifth and will end after comparing the element present at position n minus 1 with the element present at position n and swapping if necessary. This is called as one pass of bubble sort algorithm and after one pass the largest element present in the list would have slowly bubbled from whatever position it is in the list to the last position which is the final sorted position for the largest element. Then in the second pass once again we start with the first two elements second and third but now we won't go till the nth element because in the last position already we have placed the largest element so therefore we will stop when we come to n minus 1th element n minus 2 n minus 1 we will compare swap if necessary and we will stop there. So the second largest element will go to the its final position that is the second but one position in the list. In the third pass once again from starting position but will stop at n minus 2 n minus 3 and n minus 2 will compare and stop. So in this particular fashion we do it n minus 1 times n minus 1 passes we do then all the elements will be sorted because after n minus 1 passes only one element will be left and that can be left there itself because it will be in the final sorted position. Let us take an example and understand how bubble sort works. So let us consider we are given with 5 numbers ok 4, 9, 8, 6, 2. So these are the numbers that we, that we need to sort in ascending order using bubble sort algorithm. So we will place a pointer j to point to the first element and compare j with element present at j plus 1 that is the second position and we find that they are in order. The first the element pointed to by j is already smaller than element pointed to by j plus 1 therefore we are not going to do anything we will just move the j pointer to point to the second element because next we need to compare the second element with the third element. So we will compare these two elements and we find that they are out of order. So since they are out of order we will swap them 4, 8, 9, 6, 2. Then we will move the j pointer to point to the third element to compare j and j plus 1 that is third and fourth element. Again we find that they are out of order therefore we will swap 4, 8, 6, 9, 2. We will move the j pointer to point to the 4th element, compare 4th and 5th element j and j plus 1, again we find that they are out of order and therefore we will swap 4, 8, 6, 2, 9. So this is one pass of bubble sort algorithm and we can see that the largest element among this is 9 and 9 has gone to its final sorted position. So now we need to repeat the same procedure leaving of the fifth element with these four elements. So what we do is in the second pass we consider these four elements, place the j pointer over here, we will compare first element with the second element, we find that they are out of order, sorry they are in order so therefore we are not going to swap. Next we will move the j pointer to the second position, second and the third element will be compared and we find that they are out of order so we swap 4, 6, 8, Two. Then we will move the j pointer to point to the third element okay? and when we compare the 
third and the fourth element we find that the third element is greater than the fourth element therefore we have to swap 4 6 2 8 This is second pass of bubble sort algorithm, and we can see the second largest element has gone to its final sorted position. Then in the third pass, again we start with the first two elements, but we stop after we compare the second and the third element. So j is pointing here, j and j plus one are compared. E of j is less than e of j plus one, therefore they are in order. We will just leave it and move the j pointer to move to the next position to compare it with next. adjacent element when 6 and 2 are compared we find that they are out of order we will swap 4 2 6 so this is pass 3 of bubble sort algorithm and the third largest element has gone to its final sorted position next we take 4 and 2 we place the j pointer over here and when we compare it with this we find that element present at j of play j plus 1 is smaller than e of j therefore we swap 2 and 4 we get so this is pass 4 of the bubble sort algorithm and the fourth largest element has gone to its final sorted position only one element is left out so we don't have anything to compare it with therefore we leave it so when we have n elements there is five elements we need n minus 1 that is four passes to sort all the elements in the order we can see the sorted order the first element is 2 second element is 4 third element is 6 Fourth element is eight, and fifth element is nine. So this is the input we had, an unsorted list of elements, and this is the final output that is the sorted list of elements. Let us see the algorithm for bubble sort. So bubble sort algorithm. We take an array of n elements as the input, and we have, we already know that to sort n elements, bubble sort algorithm requires one fewer pass, n minus one pass. So let us keep track of this using a pointer pointed to by i. For i is equal to one to n minus one. Okay, so. Pass uh, one to n minus one. So if there are five elements, there will be only four passes. And in each one of the pass, what we need to do? We need to place the j pointer starting from the first position. And where do we need to stop? We need to stop at n minus i. Why do we need to stop at n minus y? Because in the first pass, we start from the first element and we stop after comparing fourth and fifth element. The j pointer was pointing to four. J pointer was pointing to four. So when n is equal to one, your j should stop at n minus i. N minus i. Okay, that is i minus one. That is equal to four. When i is equal to two, in the second pass. In the second pass, we are not going to compare the last element. We will stop when we compare the third and the fourth element. So therefore, j should be equal to n minus i. That is equal to five minus two. That is equal to three. And then in the third pass, j will be equal to n minus i. That is five minus three is equal to two. So every time we can see where we have to stop has to reduce by one, and that can be easily computed using in which pass we are currently comparing the elements. So every time it decreases by one. So as i increases, this j where j has to stop also keeps reducing. And it stops one element before it compared to the previous pass. So therefore, j is equal to one to n minus i. What we are going to do if y of j plus one happens to be smaller than y of j, the element present in the next position, wherever j is pointing to, j plus one is the next position. If that happens to be smaller than j, means the element present at the current position, then we are going to swap y of j. And e of j plus one. Only if they are out of order. Otherwise, we are not going to do anything. So this, when it executes n minus i number of times, the first largest element will go to the final sorted position. Then in the second pass again, we start from the first element, stop at n minus one. 
n minus i compare and swap if necessary so this keeps on repeating and after n minus 1 passes all the elements will be sorted that we have seen so next we will see and as we can see this is a non recursive algorithm it has two for loops nested for loops one inside the other so and um, the operations are performed inside the nested loops so next we will analyze the efficiency of bubble sort algorithm and see how to analyze a non recursive algorithm which consists of nested loops so what is the first uh, step that we do first step is the input size what is the input size of this algorithm so the input size of this algorithm is the number of elements in the list how many elements are present in the list that we have to sort that is n the second step is identifying the basic operation so what is the basic operation the basic operation in this case see inside the two for loops there are two operations that are performed so one is the comparison operation and other one is the swap operation even though this swap actually places the elements in the correct sorted order if they are out of order if we can look at it very closely this swap will be done only depending on the comparison operation after performing the comparison operation we will decide whether we have to swap or not so whether the swap operation will be performed or not this comparison operation will always be performed therefore we will consider this comparison operation as the basic operation so basic operation is the comparison operation if e of j plus 1 is less than e of j so this comparison operation is the basic operation okay so next is we need to count for how many times this comparison operation is performed so let us represent it by c of n let c of n represent represent the number of times the comparison operation is performed comparison operation is performed ok so next we need to see whether this algorithm has best worst and average cases we can notice whether the elements are in order or out of order the comparison operation will always be performed only thing is we may not perform the swap if they are in order if they are out of order we are performing the swaps since we have considered the comparison operation as the basic operation the basic operation will be performed however it is whether you have 4 and 9 or 9 and 4 the comparison will be performed and only after that the decision is taken whether to swap them or not so therefore this algorithm doesn't have best worst and average cases because in either case the comparison will be performed so therefore there is no best worst and average case or all the three cases are same best worst and average cases are same ok so no best worst and average cases ok so next thing is we need to write a summation expression for c of n so what we will do is c of n is equal to so for each loop we will have a summation expression ok so there are two for loops so there are two summations so the outer for loop is i so this is i i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 1 i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 and j is equal to 1 to n minus i for each value of i for each value of j how many times is this operation executed because we want the count of number of times the basic operation is executed which is the comparison operation in our case so for each value of i when i is equal to 1 for j is equal to 1 2 3 4 comparison operations for j is equal to 1 comparison will be performed once for j is equal to 2 comparison will be performed once for j is equal to 3 comparison will be performed once till n minus i it will be per every time it will be performed once for each value of i then again i value will be incremented again j starts from 1 and for each value of j it is uh, executed 
once. So therefore, it is for each value of i from 1 to uh, n minus 1 and for each value of j is equal to 1 to n minus i, key comparison operation is executed once. Okay. So as we already know, summation upper bound to lower bound is equal to upper bound uh, summation upper bound to lower bound of 1 is equal to upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. So therefore, here when we remove this summation, let the other summation be as it is i is equal to 1 to n minus 1. This one upper bound is n minus i minus lower bound is 1 upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. So this plus 1 and this minus 1 gets cancelled. So this will be summation of i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 of n minus i okay so now here we can see this i value is varying from 1 to n minus 1 so let us substitute this the summation is just adding so when we substitute 1 over here we will get it as n minus 1 plus n minus 2 we proceed in this particular fashion okay and the last term we get is n minus n minus 1 okay so that is nothing but n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus up to when we remove this bracket we will get n minus n plus 1 so basically let us write it in the reverse order it is 1 plus 2 plus up to n minus 2 plus n minus 1 okay so we know formula for this 1 plus 2 up to n 1 plus 2 plus up to n is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2. So in our case n has stopped at n minus 1. So therefore it is n that is n minus 1 into n plus 1. n is itself is n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. So that is equal to this plus 1 minus 1 gets cancelled n minus 1 into n by 2. So when we uh, solve it n into n, n squared minus n divided by 2 constants we can eliminate lower order terms we can eliminate eliminate and we can tell it belongs to theta of n squared so the efficiency of bubble sort algorithm in all the three cases is theta of n squared that it is a, it is a quadratic algorithm however we can notice one thing in bubble sort algorithm and thereby improve the running time of the bubble sort algorithm not the order of growth the running time of the bubble sort algorithm can be improved by making a small observation what is that observation see if in any pass now let us consider we are in the third pass when we are in the third pass if the elements are already in, uh, in the sorted order okay now suppose before this the elements were in this particular order at the beginning of the third pass let us assume 3 1 2 4 5 okay in the first pass this was sorted second pass this was sorted third pass we are working on and when we compare 3 and 1 we will find if they are out of order 1 3 2 then we will swap 3 and 2 okay so 1 2 3 so now all the elements have got sorted but still in the fourth pass we will compare the elements and then take a call as to uh, 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 whether to swap or not but if we can notice in any pass if there are no swaps at all then the subsequent passes are not needed at all because the elements will already be sorted now assume if this is the input if this is the input that is given to a bubble sort algorithm in the first pass we will compare 1 and 2 and if we count the number of swaps number of swaps okay we compare this, comparison is done, but swapping is not done. Then again we compare this, no swapping because they are in order. Compare this, no swapping in order, no swapping in order. Number of swaps is equal to zero. So in the first pass itself we can tell, after the first pass we can tell, we need not continue with the second, third, fourth or any passes because the elements will be sorted. So the conclusion is, in whichever pass the elements get sorted, in the next immediate pass, we can count the number of swaps, we can count the number of swaps in all the passes, okay. So, 
Once the elements get sorted, in the next pass, the number of swaps will happen to be zero. So as soon as the number of swaps happens to be zero, we can stop the bubble sort algorithm and we can conclude that the elements are already sorted. This anyways doesn't improve the order of growth. The order of growth will still be quadratic because comparison is the basic operation that we are considering. But running time will significantly improve because if the element gets sorted in the first pass itself, then second to n minus one passes we are eliminating. If there are hundred elements, thousand elements, and if the elements get sorted in fourth pass, fifth pass, tenth pass, then all the remaining passes can be eliminated. Okay, so that logic can be incorporated in bubble sort algorithm, and maybe we can call it as efficient. Bubble sort algorithm which takes elements from one to n. Okay, so the outer form loop will be as it is for i is equal to one to n minus one. Okay, here we will have a variable called as number of swaps. We will initialize it to zero. Then we will have a j loop for j is equal to one to n minus i. If a of i, a of j plus one. Happens to be less than p of j, then swap p of j and p of j plus one. Okay. Whenever you perform a swap, you just count number of swaps is equal to number of swaps plus one. Okay. So now you come here before starting the next pass. Before starting the next pass, you can check if number of swaps is equal to zero. If number of swaps is equal to zero, then exit. Whatever pass it is, if it happens in the fourth pass, at the end of the fourth pass, you don't start the fifth pass and you exit. If there are hundred elements, you can, depending upon when the elements get sorted, the remaining number of passes can be skipped. And therefore, the overall running time of the algorithm will reduce, but not the order of growth. Order of growth will still be quadratic. Okay, thank you.